So let's start with the liver. We discussed basic liver anatomy in the anatomy and approach video, including liver segments and vasculature. Here, we're looking at the liver parenchyma itself or background liver. We won't get into focal liver lesions for now. We'll cover how to characterize liver lesions in a further video. So to start, let's look at this four phase scan of a normal liver. You'll notice that the appearance and attenuation of the normal liver depends heavily on the phase of IV contrast. But the normal liver is pretty homogeneous on all of these phases. As you know, normal liver has a dual blood supply, about 75% from the portal venous system and about 25% from the hepatic artery. Here are the four phases we're looking at here. So we have one on the left, a non-contrast acquisition before IV contrast was given. Two, we have a late arterial phase acquisition around 35 seconds after injection with the arteries opacified, the portal vein opacified, but not yet the hepatic veins, as you can see here. Notice that the background liver doesn't enhance that much. Remember, most of the supply is portal venous. Three, we have a portal venous phase acquisition around 75 seconds after injection with the hepatic veins, as you can see, now opacified. And the background liver is also now closer to peak enhancement. So background liver is pretty bright. And then four, we have a more delayed phase here on the right or equilibrium phase. This one was acquired at about a few minutes after injection with contrast now moving out of the liver and the attenuation of background liver now less than it was on portal venous phase. In routine imaging of the entire abdomen and pelvis, we most commonly image in portal venous phase. So we most commonly see the liver in portal venous phase. We also not uncommonly will image without contrast. So, so you'll see the liver on non-contrast only a bunch as well. And then usually for dedicated liver evaluation, like if we're characterizing liver lesions, for example, we're gonna see all of these phases together on the same examination. All right, so let's cut to the chase. When you're looking at the background liver on CT, the two most common abnormalities that you will see in clinical practice are fatty liver disease, AKA diffuse hepatic steatosis and cirrhosis. These are also things that you wanna accurately diagnose. So we're gonna spend most of our time on these. This is a normal liver on non-contrast acquisition Background liver has a normal attenuation, most commonly in the 55 to 65 Hounsf unit range. Here it's about 55 Hounsf units. Remember that fat has a lower attenuation than water and soft tissue. Fat is darker. So diffuse fatty infiltration in the liver is going to reduce the attenuation of background liver or make it look darker. So here is a very fatty liver on non-contrast acquisition with a much lower attenuation of the liver, about 25 Hounsfield units in this case. On CT, the non-contrast acquisition is actually the best for looking for fatty liver. Once you give the patient IV contrast, which is bright, Remember, contrast timing really affects the attenuation of the liver, so it gets a little bit tougher to know if there's fatty liver or not. On a non-contrast CT, we can confidently say that there is fatty liver if, if either of the following are true. One, the background liver attenuation is less than 40 Hounsman units, as it is here. And two, if the liver attenuation is more than 10 Hounsfield units less than the attenuation of the spleen, as it is here as well. Now, these rules are good for moderate to severe steatosis. CT is actually not that sensitive for picking up patients with more mild fatty liver. 
So as I mentioned, once you give IV contrast, it's a lot harder to know if there is fatty liver or not. But a pretty reliable criteria on portal venous phase is the liver attenuation being more than 25 Hounds units less than the spleen attenuation. So here are some post-contrast images, let's say in two patients, and we have some ROIs that we've drawn here on the liver and the spleen in these patients. So what do you think? Do these patients have fatty liver or not? So these are both images of a patient with a normal liver that is not fatty. So some of you might have called this first liver fatty, right? The difference between 211 and 94 is much greater than 25. So this rule here only applies when it is a portal venous phase. This is a late arterial phase in, on this image here on the left. You'll notice that the artery is very high attenuation, the portal veins are opacified, but the hepatic veins are not yet opacified. This is a late arterial phase, so the background liver, as we know, is going to be pretty dark. The spleen is usually very enhancing or very bright, so you're going to overcall fatty liver if you try to apply this rule in a late arterial phase. Calling fatty liver on a late arterial phase acquisition is the most common mistake that I see residents making when they use or try to apply this particular rule. So remember, if it's a post-contrast study and the hepatic veins are not yet opacified, you can't tell if the liver is fatty unless, of course, it happens to be under 40 Hounsfe units, which would be pretty rare. This image here on the right is a portal venous phase. Notice that the hepatic veins are opacified here. And in this case, based on the attenuations of the liver and the spleen, we would not be able to call this liver a fatty liver. If you take a few things away from this discussion, remember one, fatty liver is super common and you're going to see it all the time on CT, so you need to know these rules. Two, Routine CT is not very sensitive for mild hepatic steatosis or mild fatty liver, but it's really good for moderate to severe fatty liver. We can call fatty liver confidently on a non-contrast scan when attenuation is less than 40 Hounsfield units or more than 10 Hounsfield units less than the spleen. Three, once we give contrast, things get a little tougher and less sensitive. But if the liver is more than 25 hounds per units less than the spleen on portal venous phase, again, only once the hepatic veins are opacified, then we can also call fatty liver. Moving on, this is a non-contrast acquisition of the abdomen. We've drawn an ROI here on the liver, and the liver measures 83 hounds per units. Remember, the normal liver is most commonly somewhere between 55 and 65, uh, so the attenuation is pretty high here. The background liver being too high attenuation is something that you're going to see less frequently than fatty liver in clinical practice, but when the background liver measures greater than 75 hounds per units on non-contrast acquisition, that's considered abnormal. The most common causes are usually listed as hemochromatosis, hemosiderosis, Wilson's disease, glycogen storage disease, medications like amiodarone, gold, etc. But let's simplify this a little bit. Increased attenuation in the liver is most commonly going to be caused by iron deposition. And you're going to see iron deposition in the liver in you know, hemosiderosis or hemochromatosis. That's going to be the most common cause, iron deposition. Copper deposition is less common, but you're going to see that occasionally in the setting of Wilson's disease. And you can also see increased attenuation in the liver in the setting of amiodarone use. So you get amiodarone deposition, not necessarily toxicity. This is in patients who are taking amiodarone for uh, long periods of time and also not uncommon. If you're going to remember two things that increase the attenuation of the liver, I would remember iron first and amiodarone second. 
In the next video, we'll introduce the topics of cirrhosis and portal hypertension, so stay tuned.